order. And Mr. Counselor Chris Hope, would you give the invitation for us, please? Sure. Heavenly Father, Lord, Creator of all things, we come to you this morning, Lord. We just thank you for the many blessings you've given each and every one of us this day, Lord. Thank you for our great family and friends, Lord, that we have that help support us when we need it, Lord. We just thank you for our people that are in public service, Lord. Just pray that you will help them to make good and wise decisions, Lord, that to impact their people that they serve. And just thank you for the love that you've given us. Please give us joy and peace in our hearts, Lord. Just be with those that are have an illness today, Lord. Just give them extra strength and help us to keep <coughs> your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I want to thank all everybody for coming out this morning. I think we know most of the people here in the audience, except the guy sitting on the left there. I don't know if we know him. But we'll get introduced to him in a little bit. Kelly, would you do the roll for me, please? Harley Besser? Here. Chris Stubb? Here. Buell England? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Julia Cutts? Here. Bradley Cobb? Joe Crittenden? Jody Fishinghop? Meredith Fraley? Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Tana Glory Jordan? Present. Curtis Snell? Here. David Thornton? Present. Kara Callan? All my needs, we do have a quorum. Thank you, Shelley. Next on the agenda note is approval of minutes for the March 16th regular session. Do I hear a motion for approval? I move motion. to be approved. Second. Motion sec uh, approved and second. Do I hear uh, any comments on the minutes to be changed or do we pass them as stated? All in favor say yes. 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 All in favor say no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just check and see if everybody's awake. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to the reports. And uh, Norma, I know we have a report, but as uh, a standard procedure, we'd like you to come forward and give us anything or that you'd like to put out, any announcements or anything that you might miss on the report, and then maybe we have some questions from the audience. Well, I'll just tell you a couple things that are going on. Uh, we're in the process of uh, having a new driving cooler constructed at the uh, food distribution warehouse, so we're replacing the original one. It's quite a large undertaking. Also, um, uh, <coughs> we'll be starting at the food distribution sites and still will install us off some renovation. We've uh, done that in Tahlequah and a couple of other places. We're going to this year get to work on Stillwell and Salsaw, so they'll look much nicer and, and uh, just be better to serve folks. So that's some of the things that are going on. Good. That's good to hear that you're keeping up with the renovation on the first time. Well, we were very fortunate. Some of you know that last year we were able to get uh, a more correct amount of funding. We've been underfunded forever. And some of those corrections were made uh, with the, some of the new administration. So with those funds, we were able to afford to do that. Is there, is there plans to put a food distribution site there in no water or yes. those county sites there? Yes, yeah. that's another thing that we hope to be uh, getting the budget as soon as uh, the mods signed off from last night so that we can let bids for no water. And one of the things that will happen there will be uh, food distribution site. Now it won't be open every day, but we'll start out at two days and see how that goes. Now will that eliminate the tailgate site? Yes. Or that will? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Well. Good. Any questions for Norma? Ms. Fulbright. Yes, ma'am. I have a comment. I want to thank you for always being so prompt with any inquiry or request or concern. Thank you. It's very timely and I appreciate it. Thank well, you. That, you oh. I'll pass that off to my staff, and they're, uh, they, we try. So we hope that it's working most of the time. Thank you very much. Appreciate the comments. Thank you, Norma. Mm -hmm. Moving right along to community services with Charlie, and we're going to be here to represent community services. Morning. I'm Ashley Canoe. Uh, Charlie couldn't be here this morning. Uh, do have one announcement the Veterans Appreciation Dinner. Uh, will be Saturday the 17th from 4 to 7 at Sequoia is the place where we play. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to take them back. Any questions for uh, Ashley? Ashley, I do have one. Uh, I'd like to know when the projected date is to approve some more of those self-help housing to building packages. Okay. If you could find that out and either email us back or email me or email us. Uh, 
see how this one's council. I'd like to know when we're going to be this equipment selection again. Okay, I'll get that to you. Yeah. Is there any questions for Ashley? Well, thank you for coming, Ashley. Thank you. The next one is actually for Michael Lynn on roads and transportation. Barry, I believe you're here to represent Michael. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I believe uh, you have a copy of the report. Are there any questions or? Yes, any questions for uh, for Barry? Very good, Barry. Thank you. Thank you. The next is also for Michael Land. It's public comments, understanding uh, agenda item on the agenda for each month, and next the council council committee. I don't know what that particular thing is, so I don't see any questions on that. <coughs> Thank you. And housing services for David Sutherland. David. <coughs> Just a couple of things uh, I want to do. The disclosures that I do each month. Uh, just got one. Loella Swimmer. Uh, she's an aunt to Secretary of State Melody Knight. Uh, Going to receive housing rehabilitation services, a rehab. Um, just remind you, uh, you got my report. Uh, we've changed the date of the, the board meeting since I submitted that. It's this Friday at noon at the uh, Housing Authority building over on Hensley Drive. And last thing is uh, next week I'll be out of the office at an Ameren board meeting. Uh, so don't hesitate to call if you have questions or something. Uh, you guys got my phone number, so don't hesitate to call if you need me. Any questions? Jordan. The advisory members won't be able to come on Friday because we'll all be at joint council. We, don't, we, we have a really loud agenda. Okay. Uh, David, I do have one. Uh, and I think you mentioned at the council meeting last night. You're going to send us out all the projects that you mm -hmm. finished on those uh, yep. uh, stimulus funds. Yep. Okay. I'll, prob I'll probably get it out to you before the next committee meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just send it over here, then we can distribute it to all the council members and do that. Okay. Thank you, David. Huh? Next is Commerce with Anna. Anna Knight, please. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. We have a copy of my report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Anna, it looks like you got a good report. Uh, did I see anybody had a question from Ms. Knight? No question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Going further to the agenda of old business, I see none pending. <coughs> Moving on to new business. A resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application by the Department of Children Youth and Family Services to the USDHHS Families Violence Prevention and Service Program for Victims of Family Violence. Uh, the resolution, do I hear a, a motion to approve that? I make a motion to be approved. Motion approved. I hear a second on that. A motion approved is second. Now, is there any discussion on this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, usually, uh, I don't. I don't think we got any questions, Norma. Okay. Well, there's no match on that. Okay. All, right. All, right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same time. Thank you. Number two, the resolution, a resolution authorizing the submission of the grant application for youth shelter services by the Department of Children, youth and family services by the Department of Children. Youth and Family Services to the U.S. Family and Youth Services Bureau Runaway and Homeless Youth Program. I hear a motion to approve. Second. I second. Got a motion to approve and second. Any discussion on this particular one? That's from Norman's office group also. Is this no match on this one too, Norman? It's a $7,000 match on this one. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, number three, a resolution to continuing support for the rural transportation program. The sponsor on that is Mr. Councilor So. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, this resolution is, uh, supports the continuation of a rural transit program. And I move for its approval. I'll second. Motion to second. <coughs> any discussion? Yes, sir. What's the price on the transit program? What's it cost? What's it cost? Cost. Uh, I don't really know if it was in there. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sure that's something very to be. Uh, 
barrier. Ashley, can you get that for us? Yes, sir. It's on the rural transit program. Uh, we'd like to know if there's a match to it or what the total uh, amount of the resolution is going to be for us. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Thank you. Number four, a resolution approving and authorizing the submission of the amended fiscal year 2010 in and housing plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to approve? Anybody motion approved? A motion. Anybody second the motion? Okay. Number four. Did I hear a second with that motion? Second. Okay, got a motion second. Now discussion. Uh, Marvin, you want to step up front here because I'm sure you're going to have to address these answers instead of me. I have Mr. Baker and, and Ms. Jordan. <coughs> we looked at this yesterday, and you know it's the same thing that you that you brought, and you know we look at it, and you know there's. Uh, less than 6% is going for to build any houses, uh, about 5.5%. You're buying almost that much in, in raw land that uh, uh, when, you know, we've got a thousand acres in reserve right now to build houses on. Um, I just not, I'm not going to support this. Uh, uh, you know, we, we made an analogy yesterday that, well, with the mortgage assistance, we're doing 288 families and, and this, that, and the other, but it is not the same thing. And uh, I just, you know, we get $30 million a year uh, for housing. And uh, yes, rental assistance is important, and yes, you know, uh, rehab is important, but to not build any houses. Uh, it's just I can't I can't go, and uh, I really think we need to rethink this deal. Uh, we're doing a major disservice to our uh, uh, rural schools uh, by not uh, uh, building in such a manner that we might get impact aid and until some of those things changes, I'm I'm not going to be in support of any housing plan. Thank you, uh, Miss Jordan. Uh, my question is, Marvin, pertaining to, and I, I'm very glad to hear you've got a favorable ruling on the law enforcement activities. But I see in the papers that you gave us yesterday that the, the money that we're providing to law enforcement activity, which is almost <coughs> $1.2 million a year out of this 2010 budget, which amounts to at least 50% of their total budget is to benefit residents of Cherokee and Ahasda assisting assisted housing units. And my question is, uh, well, not a question, but a comment, and, and I would like for you to carry this back to Sharon, who I see is not here today, to incorporate in reports that she provides to this council from this point forward, I would like to ask her to provide monthly logs of law enforcement activities related to Nahasta assisting hou assistant housing <coughs> units showing how she's spending approximately $100,000 per month on the 900 and some houses that we still have on the ground. We're, we're giving her the same amount of money from Nahasta funding now that we gave her when we had 5,500 units on the ground that were not paid for. That has been reduced to something in the neighborhood of 900 units, and we're still giving her the same amount of money. I would think we would see an increased amount of activity in protecting the citizens, the membership, that are living in those 900 remaining units. And I have failed to see in the past three years a law of how law enforcement spends their activities and spends the <coughs> hundred thousand per month, and at some point we could be asked to justify where the hundred thousand dollars a month went to. I'm not against law enforcement. We need law enforcement. 
I'm against the way that we're funding law enforcement. When we're taking this much money from housing funds and we're not seeing it return to Nahasda assisted units. And so from this point forward, I'm asking you, who you're in charge overall of this money, and I'm asking Sharon to provide us monthly logs of how they're using this money. I mean, we just, we need to see it, folks, because we administer this money. We need to see where this money is going and whether this is the best way to spend these dollars. These dollars are tied to these housing units. And we need to make sure that these dollars are being spent on these housing units and the people that occupy them. The other thing that I would like to ask you to consider is why does it have to be either mortgage assistance or building houses? You and I have talked before about a full complement of housing services that would give anyone a citizen of Cherokee Nation the opportunity to achieve home ownership. Why can we not have a complement of our money being used for our low income person all the way up to where we are now, which is basically providing a $15,000 down payment to those people that have the ability to achieve a loan in mainstream America. We have failed or we have abandoned the people on the lower end of income within our membership. And I just find that unacceptable. I think that we can take this money and leverage it in such a way, and Marvin, I know you have the ability to do this, leverage it in such a way that we have a full complement of services for all of our Cherokee people to attempt to achieve home ownership as if that is what they desire to do. Right now, it appears to me that we have abandoned the lower end, the lower income people within our membership, and we're just basically saying you have no right to ever think that you have an expectation of owning a home. And I just find that unacceptable. I, too, because of that, and not nothing personal to Marvin, not nothing personal to the people that are operating these funds, but I also cannot support this until we see a full complement of services where all of our people have that expectation that they can achieve home ownership at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to echo uh, Councilor Jordan's uh, concern about the marshal services. So I uh, asked the marshal director to have that report to us last month on what was served on each county, and it didn't appear on the reports this month, so we would like to have a follow up on it, so we'll do that. Uh, Next on the uh, list is uh, Councilor Thornton. Yes. <coughs> Marvin, uh, I don't know if I can support this or not. And my main reason is I've always supported mortgage assistance. Matter of fact, uh, when it was five, 500000 uh, I think I made the motion bring it up to a million for mortgage assistance. And uh, I think it's great. I don't, you know, it. What it does is it, it gives homes to people that are financially able to buy a home. Is it a first mortgage? Is it a first home owner's mortgage? Is that what it is? Yes. Yes, the first home yes. owner to get it. <coughs> <coughs> Out of the 4.4 .4 million, <coughs> how much of that goes to administration costs? Uh, that particular 4.4 .4 million. Uh, None of it is. That's the good. environmental programs take up, I believe, about 116000 The administration of the mortgage assistance program is actually included in a separate item under the housing management services. But it, does that come out of the $30 million? Yes. Okay. yes. Uh, could you get that number for me? Yes. Uh, you don't have to have it right now, just unless you've got it. I've got it. <laughs> In fact, uh, uh, refer back to my high tech system here. <laughs> this is my. This is my oh, that's a high tech system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, 
The map management uh, for this plan is 638461 plus IDC. That's just direct cost, 438461 And that's in, again, that's in addition uh, to the, actually it's 4320000 uh, that goes directly into the 15000 per yeah. family. Well, uh, you know, I appreciate that mortgage assistance program, but I think we could put more into housing. Uh, I don't know over your overall budget what you could look at or what you, people could look at. Uh, the, the main thing with me is building houses creates jobs. And we have contractors out there that are Cherokee, and in this day and time, they're not getting very many jobs. But when you go to contractors for concrete, for framing, heat and air, sewer and water, and the electrical on the house, you're talking about helping a lot of people that are Cherokee within the Cherokee Nation building homes. And when you talk about giving the mortgage assistance, you're talking about helping bankers and loan companies that that aren't that I know of, and, and for that reason, I'm I'm not too high on, on putting all our funding in one pot for homes, uh, because I think jobs should be a big concern to us right now, especially in housing. And I know in the past we've built a lot of houses. You know, after I got on the first got on the uh, council, well, we, uh, <coughs> that was the main priority was building homes, and we was from 250 to 350 a, a year is what we was wanting. Uh, and I'm not real high on this giving mortgage loans for trailers. Uh, if you give a mortgage loan for a trailer, I'm just not high on trailers. I think in five years they're deteriorating to the point that uh, uh, if they don't, if they're not really kept up, that they're, they're going to go down. And where you'd have a, a stick frame home, I think it would be even a even a uh, pole barn home would be better to me than than a trailer. And that's another thing. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the thing, and uh, I can't support it. Thanks, Thanks for your comments, uh, Councilor Craig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Marvin, yesterday in, in our meeting, it seems like I remembered something about it. Somebody mentioned a figure of $60 million, counting from prior years carryover and, and plus this year's money. And Is that is that right? Is that somewhere that in that I, neighborhood? I okay. said that. It's a, it's uh, a little and, over $59 million. And Mr. Soap mentioned yesterday something about somebody maybe kind of, in a, in a sense, using a template, you know, <coughs> uh, soap percentage out this much for MAP, this much for uh, self-help, this much for whatever. Mr. Jordan this morning mentioned a full array. I can remember the old days, in 68, when I was working for the tribe, we were building uh, water lines and, and panel homes and, and all of that. And back then, if you if you had a, a very good job, if, I, if my memory serves me right, you didn't qualify for a mutual help home. So, and that was the only, uh, you know, back then, that was kind of the only only place to go, uh, and, you know, the mutual health program. Well, now we've got the other programs, and as Ms. Jordan mentioned, I'd like to see us factor in a percentage, if you will, a template type thing or something, to where we, instead of building 15 uh, self-help uh, type homes, maybe we could build, you know, 50 mutual help type homes to complement all, all the other things that we've got going where we can serve all of our people. And like uh, Mr. Thornton said, uh, you know, jobs. I mean, jobs are critical right now. Um, seems like mostly the jobs we, we produce are in, in casinos, uh, a lot of them. So I'd like to see, as David mentioned, something, you know, the plumbers, the electricians, the bricklayers, the I mean, that money turns over several times in the counties, and it would be a plus to us. Uh, it would become stronger. And, and I'd like to see us, if not now, at least soon, maybe go back into that a little bit, uh, you know, where we can serve some of the people who don't have a chance right now. They can't get along with it. They don't qualify. 
and uh, that's that's my comment. Okay, thank thank you. for your comments, Councilor Brittany. Uh, Councilor So. Yeah, Martin, we have a graph here, and I don't know if you place it here or who placed it here, but uh, can you go over that graph real quick? Okay. Okay. This was this was a graph that I did. Uh, in reading some of the public comments about new construction, uh, wanted to convey the ideal of home ownership. Uh, you've heard some some arguments and some good arguments about new construction itself, but this graph uh, takes uh, what is termed the old plan. If we were taking $10 million, uh, how far would that go as far as providing home ownership? And that's all this is intended to do. Uh, in the 2005 Indian Housing Plan, there were 93 houses constructed with $10 million. Uh, when we, uh, in the 2004 IHP. So in the 2005, what you see is, uh, this is how many houses would have been constructed if we were continuing to follow that old plan uh, compared to our existing plan using mortgage <coughs> assistance and self-help construction, which is kind of the orange color. Uh, that's how many houses or how much home ownership is being provided compared to if we would continue putting 10 million into new construction. And you can see uh, that that graph will continue upwards uh, as far as how many people are actually getting home ownership uh, through the mortgage assistance program. And again, these are just numbers. You've heard some of the reasons that um, that <clears throat> the numbers, of course, don't tell the full story. There's other arguments about uh, a different policy and a different plan. But this was to convey that idea that uh, there's a lot more people getting home ownership under our current plan <coughs> than there was under the what is often termed the new construction plan, even though I'll point out mortgage assistance can be new construction as well, and there is some new construction, and we're encouraging that new construction takes place under the mortgage assistance program. Marvin, there's a lot of flexibility in the, in the, the MAP plan, there's no doubt about that, but you know, it seems like we're, we're talking about home ownership, but we're not talking about home ownership. This, this uh, graph, depicts the fact that the, that the plan that we're currently under, if, if we implement it, would increase home ownership significantly above the other types of uh, construction projects where you're just building, uh, you know, mutual health homes. According to the graph that, that you put together, and I wouldn't think that you were in the know. There, there seems to be a other sentiment, though, that is focused on providing a home for someone that can't afford a house. And so we we're saying that we want to put them in a, in a, a stick home that has bricks on it, that's on a piece of, of land. Do you, how do you capture those uh, people that are in that category so that you evaluate and determine that need? What, what, what method are you using to do that? Because, you know, if we're given 1,500 homes uh, to people that, that are on the fringes of borderline that, that qualify, and, and but they're you know out here and they're productive versus the people that can't or uh, can't afford or, or don't have the skills to uh, maintain their uh, home ownership. Do you have those numbers identified or, or not? Um, first of all, the the graph is uh, as far as the orange part is actually actually. Uh, pretty close to being actual numbers, not projections. Uh, those are how many people are being served. The type of people are being served under the mortgage assistance program have to be able to qualify for a market loan. So right. they're not people on any kind of edge. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is built alongside of the mortgage assistance program is the program called the Self-Sufficiency Counseling. And it provides the alternative for people who can't get a, a market loan right now. And it allows them to get training and assistance and 
uh, reducing uh, their debt, uh, increasing their credit scores, those kinds of things. That program is intended to uh, uh, allow those people that want to participate in, in that to get up to the point where they can participate in the mortgage assistance program. So the, the ideal is that the, the mortgage assistance program itself is uh, it, it is for people who are responsible uh, yeah, but we're talking about the other part, so let's talk about that, okay. more, and that's what sure. I'm really interested in, okay. because I haven't heard a lot of discussion about that, but that seems to be getting a lot of the attention on this uh, IHP, because we want to build homes for people that can't afford it, and that's really what we're, we're, they're saying there's not a need. I mean, there's a need out there, but it's not being met according to this plan, and so I'm just curious as to why it, it appears that those people are being left out. Um, it, when the are they? I mean, that's, yeah, that's the, yeah. Uh, that. they're being left out if they want to be left out. Uh, okay. It's the way. So it's a choice? Is that what I heard you just say? Yes, really yes, a because, yes, because a mortgage assistance program, when it was created, we could have taken all the money formerly uh, under what I call the 100% <coughs> subsidy program, what other people refer to as new construction. We're paying for a full house under the old program. We could have taken all that money and simply converted it into 15000 a apiece mortgage assistance. And the only people that would have been served by that are those people, you know, that are ready, leaving out this whole a number of people, vast, a, a, a whole bunch of people who aren't up to that. <coughs> Instead, we took some of that money and created this self, what we call self-sufficiency counseling program and put a lot of money into that and training people, uh, 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 <coughs> getting people up to the point and giving them that opportunity to become homeowners may not be tomorrow, may not be next week because of bad credit and those kinds of things. But it's a long-term, it's, you know, I know. It I, takes a commitment. Is that what I'm hearing exactly. you say? Exactly. Yeah, and it, one way to look at it, and I know the council puts a heavy emphasis on education, this is just a, simply another education program, and in this case, it's going to get people uh, the ability to borrow money, to get in housing, things like that. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, council Colbert. Thank you. I've thought about this an awful lot, and we get a lot of criticism from people saying, well, we're not building new houses like they used to. Well, like they used to, the poorest of the poor were put in these houses, and they could not maintain them or keep them up, and we've all driven by these situations, these blocks of houses where they, were too, they didn't have the income to keep the house up after they were in it. That was part of the old plan. <coughs> but what I like about this on the mortgage assistance and the self-sufficiency counseling is it reaches some of those people who were down at the bottom to educate them to bring them up. But I, I agree with Councillor Thornton. I do not like us subsidizing the buying of mobile homes. If we're in Tornado Alley and within a few years that home has disintegrated to nothing. It's like the one half shea. It's all going to fall apart into a pile of dust if you give it long enough time. And th since being on council is kind of like an ongoing education, I found out from Speaker Braley when I first got on that the Choctaws were giving 25,000 mortgage assistance. And Councilor Fish and Hawk and I, we both agree that that would be a good way to get more people into homes and they might even do new construction. Most mortgage assistance is not new construction, but it could be. And I, I still <coughs> think raising, I've heard the argument that it's not really going to help the debt to income ratio that much, to, you know, from 15,000 up to 25. But I would like to see us give 25,000 on mortgage assistance and get away from buying these mobile homes. And I, I still would like to see us build some houses and housing tracts and put people in houses, but they've got to be educated and have an income. <coughs> and 
The plan of the past, I tell you, a lot of it was a failure. We might have built a lot of homes, but drive through Sequoia and Adair County and look at them. And if you put the poorest of the poor in a home they cannot afford, a few years later there's no screens and there's no doors and the plumbing doesn't work. They've got to be able to uh, maintain the home by the insurance. We can't just go out and build houses and move people in them when they don't have any way to, because those houses are foreclosed as much as any and their payment might be less than $25 a month. So uh, I, I'm for the part of the mortgage assistance, but I'd like to see it raised higher. And I would like for us to go back to building houses too, but I think you can see this old plan is better than the new plan that we were under. That's my thoughts on the budget. You want to respond to that, Mom? Yeah, just briefly. Um, you're, you're right in that uh, a lot of the houses that we constructed recently under the 2004 Indian Housing Plan, 2003 Indian Housing Plan, we are in fact subsidizing those right now. We're taking money from the current Indian Housing Plan and, and uh, putting a budget for David Sutherland to manage those units because the amount of income coming in does not cover the expenditures of running those programs because the people don't have enough income, that's just like you're saying. Uh, obviously, we, those houses, historically, uh, we subsidize them when <coughs> we go in years later and start rehabbing them. More money goes into it, you know. Right? It's not just simply uh, spending 100000 to build a house. The subsidy continues after that, and it affects, you know, future Indian housing plans. Just like now, we're paying for houses built years ago. <coughs> when, when uh, it goes to people who may, uh, may or may not, uh, uh, were capable of being homeowners. This particular plan tries to get those people into rental situations, or uh, if they're really interested in home ownership is through the self-sufficiency council and getting them up to the point where that they can be uh, be good homeowners, which is what we want. We just don't want people <coughs> to be homeowners and then tomorrow, you know, have to continue to subsidize them. <coughs> uh, Councilor Thorne. Uh, Marvin, on this on subject of, of good homeowners and how they take care of their homes, uh, I can take you and show you trailers <coughs> been bought by this 15,000. They're not in very good shape either. And the outside's not in very good shape. And <coughs> screens are off of them. And I can take you and show you homes that was built back at the MH where people have been paid off right now. And I've been in several. And most of them are elders that have those homes. And they're nice inside and they take care of them. They keep them clean. It just depends on who the person is when you go talk about, you know, how the home's going to look in 10, 15, 25 years. And we've had some of those homes out there a long time, at least 25 years or more. And, uh, but anyway, what, what I wanted to ask you about and tell you about, and it's getting off the subject a little bit, but that's this panel housing. Right now, we have panel houses that's been built that wasn't ventilated right and had poor circulation in those houses. And uh, <clears throat> during the winter, they're sweating real bad. They're sweating so bad, they have to mop the floors to keep the water off of them. They've got mold in the bedrooms, and somebody's going to have to go back in there and fix that. Now, I know. Just wait just a minute, okay? okay. <laughs> and, I know that you're trying to get up a program right now to pay for that. Is that going to come out of this housing program here? Uh, community services is working on that particular issue right now. Uh, and they're looking at the different funding sources and uh, they possibly could use some of the existing money that they have uh, from prior Indian housing plans or possibly this Indian housing plan, but they've committed to taking care of that issue. 
are they correcting the problem there that's on the ventilation that's, problem that, that's, that's correct they're they're going to get uh, what I suggested to them is that they do a request for a proposal from some experts in ventilation of these type of houses, uh, get recommendations from that expert architect engineer, and then go implement including whatever ventilation systems that need to be added back into those houses. Well, when some of these people complain, some of the things that were told, I don't appreciate it. And I'll talk to you about, about okay. that later. Councilor Baker. Yeah, and Marvin, not to be argumentative at all, but, you know, I look at your graph, and, you know, you made the new plan red, which is apples, and the old plan green, I mean, which is uh, orange, orange is red, and the other one is green apples. And, you know, the thing is, when we do the mortgage assistance, that money's gone. That's absolutely gone. We give it to a mortgage company, uh, for higher fees, we give it to, uh, uh, and and if the house is repossessed, we don't get a dime of it back. It's just it it's just taking fifteen thousand dollars and throwing it into the air. It's going to help some people, and I'm not opposed to it. But when we build houses and we put people in it, I mean, you sit here in this ten-year plan, five hundred fifty-eight houses. The Cherokee Nation, or the Housing Authority, or whatever entity it is, has $60 million at a minimum in assets. And these people are paying it to the Cherokee Nation, not to Bank of America. And you take those dollars that come in, and you build more houses the next year. And so, you know, it's completely different. I mean, it's apples and oranges, and if we do the old plan, then, I mean, the Housing Authority is sitting on, what, $20 million or $30 million of proceeds of sale right now? Dinah? What are they sitting on? Mr. Sutherland. David? $25. $25 million of proceeds of sale. So, if we invest our money in our people, and, and right now, folks, you can't rent a house in Teleco, Oklahoma for less than about $400 a month. Well, the poorest of the poor are paying it. So don't tell me that they can't afford to buy a house. And don't tell me that, that uh, uh, I mean, if they can pay the rent and their utilities and they're surviving at that at $400 a month and, and put up, you know, one of the problems that we had when we first started mutual health is we had payments as low as $9 a month. And, uh, and so consequently, I had people in our communities that went from paying $200 a month in rent to home ownership at $9 a month. Well, they went out and bought furniture. I'm glad they did. But they went out and bought all this other stuff and just thought that $9 a month would, was uh, what their rent or their, their house payment was going to be. And uh, as years went on, then it came up a little bit, and they got elderly, and uh, and all. But the nine dollars a month wasn't never going to pay anything. But if we came up with a plan that uh, that they paid a house payment of what they were paying rent when they, when they got the place, and carve a portion of that off for MEPA, so that ten years from now, if they need a new roof, guess what? we have a savings account for them to put that new roof on. I'm just saying, folks, we could look at this a whole lot different, and we could look at it like a business person, that, yes, we're, we're not building as many homes, but we've got an asset out there. That money is being paid back into the Cherokee Nation, and instead of 10 years later us having nothing, we would have millions and millions and millions of dollars in assets and if the people go belly up, we've got a house to, to rehab and resell to another Cherokee citizen. And I'm just, we're looking at it all wrong. It's not just a numbers game. Uh, the graph is uh, intended to show that two and a half times more people are receiving home ownership and uh, uh, that the, the asset 
Uh, it's not in the tribe, but it's in those individual people. But you didn't factor in the, their payments coming back to us that the other houses could be built with. Yeah, if in fact that uh, we didn't have to subsidize the, the program, uh, as I had stated earlier, we actually have to subsidize the program. <coughs> Uh, with additional funds from the hospital. At some point, that you, you may be, in theory, that... that uh, well, David's got $25 million of theory that he's sitting on. Well, you know, that was under uh, the 1937 Housing Act, and I think he will tell you that the requirements of the 1937 Housing Act are different than the Nahasta requirements, because back then, you had to have a minimum, you could have a minimum payment, and you can't have that under the hospice. So theoretically, you could have people moving <coughs> into these houses under that kind of program, all of them paying zero. Well, you say that, but, you know, I'm sitting here saying that, that you know, you've told me a hundred times that the hospice plan is what we, what we make it. So, that's right. That we have self-determination, and we get the money, and, and, Within reason, we decide how it's spent, That's and who it goes to, and and what the payback is, and yada yada yada. And I'm just saying, if we sit there and qualify some of this poorest to the poor that are paying $400 a month rent, and that's their house payment, and instead of renting a 50-year-old uh, house from some landlord for $400 a month. They get a brick home for $400 a month, and they don't own it for 30 years, but every dime of the payment comes back to this Cherokee Nation that we can use to put on another house, and another house, and another house. And, uh, and instead of blowing our money, we'd have assets, and if they went belly up, we'd get the house back for another person. I agree that that's an ultra wide in what you're describing, and I agree that, uh, or I recognize that's a policy difference, and uh, that's another way of looking at a way to expend the money. Uh, okay, I've got, uh, I'm going to wind this up here in just a little bit. I've got uh, uh, Councilor Jordan, Councilor Critton, and Councilor Hope, and then I'm going to ask for the vote on this. Uh, ISP plan either up or down. So I've got three more people to speak and then I'm going to call for the vote. And next up is Councilor Jordan. I was, I was looking your graph over and it, it employs the idea that we're going to spend $10 million a year on what I would call direct housing services, which is actually putting people in home ownership. And it appears to me on your graph that what you're saying, the screen line, is the stick-built houses. If we took the whole 10 million and put it on stick-built houses versus the orange line, which would take the whole 10 million and we put it on mortgage assistance. Well, if you go back to my prior comments, why can we not have a hybrid where we say put 5 million in mortgage assistance and 5 million in stick-built homes? Then if you utilize that theory using the idea that you could build almost 100 homes with $10 million or you could provide mortgage assistance to 248 people, if my calculator is right, if we took $5 million and put it into $15,000 packages for people to buy homes in mainstream America, we could get 333 of those people started. While at the same time, if we took the other five million and we put it in still built homes, which will create jobs, stimulate economy, uh, help our lower end people achieve home ownership, bring money back into the tribe so we can continue building homes, we would create some 50 homes a year. Under that scenario, we're serving 383 families a year. Why does it have to be all of one and none of the other? This is going back to my prior conversation. Why can we not create a package, a housing array of packages where we serve the lowest of the 
low income and the highest of the high income. We are to even be borrowing money and relending it to our membership that is able to buy a regular home. We are to be offering a full complement of home ownership to all of our membership so that the American dream, the Cherokee Nation dream, is to achieve home ownership. We are to have a package that offers it to all of our membership in some way or method. Nothing against you, Greg, but it's an all or nothing deal. I would like to see a graph that gives us a hybrid, that gives us a half and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I think you would have found that, that the line in between is much closer to the orange line than it is to the green line. It, it just goes back to we are the administrators of this money. We represent the people of Cherokee Nation. Are we going to just cut totally out a segment of our population and say you have no right to have an expectation of achieving home ownership. This is not what we did when we were at the Housing Authority. And this is not what we should be doing now that the money is here at the tribe. And again, it's utilizing only $10 million of $30 million for direct housing services. Folks, that's shameful. That's one third of your money going directly to where it's supposed to go. If you were a 501 nonprofit corporation, you would lose your exempt status if you allowed that to happen. One third of your money, two thirds of your money is going out here in the air. Yes, we're providing some services, but they're not permanent services. I don't believe that's what we're being provided $30 million for. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, uh, Councilor Crippen. Well, uh, kind of was right on with what I had to say, uh, Mr. Chairman. I had ten million on one grant, on one line, and ten million on another, leaving another ten million for all the other programs. Uh, I just think it ought to complement. I think uh, the full array, as she called it, I, I agree with that. I, I don't know what percentages exactly would fit, but I know we can do all of them if we just do it, and uh, that's my comment. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mark. Uh, just briefly, the ideal of it being either or is intentional because that's the way the Indian housing plan is. The ideal is that if you uh, create a situation where somebody has to perhaps work to get up to getting $15,000 by uh, improving their credit and reducing their debt and those sorts of things compared <coughs> to a $100,000 subsidy over here, uh, you know, the incentive as to which one that you would, uh, people would take and what kind of waiting list that would create will be the same sort of waiting list that uh, the housing authority maintained, which was, uh, in reality, if you look at it, a 50-year waiting list. So part of the, mo and again, uh, the <coughs> policy difference are recognized so fully but I'm trying to explain the purpose of the graph and the purpose and the reasoning behind the current Indian housing plan. I've got one more, Councilor Soap. Yeah, I just want to say thanks, Marvin, for providing this information. It really clarifies the difference between, you know, what what can be and, and what used to be, and uh, or actually you said what is happening, not projected, but what is happening and what used to be in. Uh, Really do appreciate that. Okay. okay. Yeah, one last thing, Marvin. One, one last thing is that I uh, we passed out the Marshall Service wording, and uh, that's due to the HUD uh, adopting the Cherokee Nation position. So, in consideration of this Indian Housing Plan, I'd like to uh, propose that that wording <coughs> be included to what you have. Uh, as the Indian Housing Plan revising what's in the Indian Housing Plan. Okay, and who made the motion? I'll go Shelley to uh, ask them to put that in. Uh, Curtis moved for approval and Curtis, is that all right if you to put that into the new housing plan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. And are you okay with yes. that? Okay, I, uh, I think we've heard some good uh, 
comments, uh, pros and cons on the situation here. So I think we need to go ahead and take a vote. And let's just see where we stand on the thing. And I appreciate Marvin coming over, and I appreciate all the council members for making their comments. I want to give as much time. I know there's a couple more that ask for more time, but I'd already set a time limit on it. So sorry you didn't get to uh, make your comments at the last minute, but uh, someone want to call for the vote. Call for the question. All in favor of that resolution say aye. 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 All opposed, same time. Aye. aye. I believe the uh, resolution passed. Roll call, please. Roll call to an ask for, so we'll do a roll call. Anna Gloria Jordan? No. Chris Stubbs? Yes. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? No. Kara Callan Watt? Yes. Bill England? Yes. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Arlie Buzzer? Yes. Julia Cutts? Yes. Bradley Cobb is absent. Joe Prittenden? No. Jody Fishinghoff? Meredith Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Cosby? We have 10 yes and 4 no. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, thank everybody for the comments. Uh, moving on to announcements. Do I hear any announcements uh, that might be brought forward? If not, uh, I hear most of them. Hang on, just check. Yeah, I have one announcement. I would uh, like to ask all of the departments if they would consider providing a booth on April 20th at 6 o'clock at the Halbert School Auditorium for the uh, Cherokee County Community meeting. If you all would bring out your information regarding what your department uh, does out in the community and what they have to offer, I know our community people located there at Halbert would certainly appreciate it. And, and of course everyone is invited. We're also having a hall fry. So want you to eat supper that night, too. Any more announcements? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you.